There was no shortage of punctures, near crashes, and magic handling at the first ever dry edition of Paribas Femme avec Zwift. Last year was, remember, the absolute mud fest won by Lizzie Dignan. Her Trek Segafredo squad here absolutely stacked. 18 cobbled sectors from Denain to Roubaix, 125 Ks. The finale is the same as the men's race, but yeah. Glorious weather, a bit of a tailwind for the finish. And this event now in its second year has a new title sponsor, Zwift. Elisa Balsamo, the world champ winner of Gent Wevelhem here for Trek Segafredo as well. As Lotte Capecchi, the Belgian champ, Flanders winner on SD Works. A breakaway went, the strongest of whom was Tanya Erath on EF Education Tibco in the pink jersey. But Trek Segafredo... They just bossed this entire race. This is before some of the first cobbled sectors. You've got three, four Trek riders in the picture. Ellen van Dyke leading at the front. Esty Works not in great position. And they're also not really together either. Kopecky just had to do a huge effort herself. The rider I thought would be their leader today to get to the front, eating a fair bit of wind, whilst Balsamo... I didn't see Elisa Longborghini for the first, like, eight sectors whilst Van Dijk was used to soften up the bunch, immediately creating a split. I think on the Ornand uh, de Vendigny sector, she's got Kopecky having to chase her herself, and then it eases up. And then they go again, Trek Segafredo, this time I think with Hosking doing a lead out before the next cobble sector, Volant of Briand, with Ellen Van Dijk. And they could have been even more dominant today without some bad luck you'll see later. Here you see Elisa Longoborghini, third wheel. She lets the wheel go to Ellen van Dyke, or rather to the Jumbo Visma rider on her wheel, so that Christine Majerus, who's a strong rider on Estive Works, she now has to do the annoying job of closing down that group. So just using any little advantage they could, Trek Segafredo, to bleed SD Works. Unfortunately for them, Van Dyke had a mechanical with 70 k to go. Arath attacked from the break lane was the last one to go clear. And SD Works didn't really pace. So Van Dyke was able to come back. The question was how much energy did she spend doing so? But yeah, there wasn't a mad rush in the peloton until about 10 k's later on or she sectors and then or she les or she afterwards. First Van den Broek Black and then or she les or she four-star sector, Lotta Kopecky goes. She's got Bastianelli, who's been really strong this season on UAE on her wheel. There's Lucinda Brand in the background for Trek Segafredo, making sure she bridges across to this incredibly dangerous move. And I think this is happy days for SD Works. They've got the Tour of Flanders winner, who won the sprint there. Yeah, Bastianelli's quick, but... The Lucinda brand isn't as quick as Kopecky probably on paper, but Kopecky doesn't ride. Meanwhile, Bolzano had a mechanical, and here's the, well, it's actually not that controversial. I haven't really seen anyone saying she shouldn't have been disqualified. She has a massive sticky bottle, and then afterwards, and Cavalli had had a flat, so she gets basically dragged past Cavalli, and then she's drafting the car way behind the convoy to get back to the peloton and in doing so well not related to that but she then nearly crashes as she hits this pothole i don't know how she maintained control and that bike bucked so hard and her front wheel nearly went i mean last year she crashed in the wet she was one of the riders you saw at the start of this video brand is pulling though with Balsamo coming back. This is why I didn't get why SD Works didn't let Kopecky work with her, because I thought Brand would sit on for sure with Balsamo coming back and Van Dyke just having had the mechanical and Bastianelli's contributing, and Kopecky was doing short pulls. She said this in an interview afterwards, that she didn't ride full because they were kind of riding for Vandenbroek Blach and Majerus, who were back in the group behind her. Blach, maybe, but Majerus. Preferencing her race over Kopecky, the Flanders winner, just... Doesn't make any sense to me. And when you look at that group composition with DSM and FDJ, I just think no way they were going to bring this back if they worked that hard. About 14 k's after the sticky, Balsamo was told she'd been disqualified, pulled out of the race. And yeah, this break was caught. Their 25 second gap evaporated. And here, Elisa Longoborghini, magic move, counters before they're actually caught. She goes clear and goes past them whilst Kopecky probably wasn't even expecting her to be there. Marked, not by Black, by Norsgaard, who she promptly drops, and then Elena Cicchini, who she drops on the next cobbled sector, beginning a 33-kilometer solo move, I think on the last Templeur sector. 15 seconds straight away, goes to 17, then 25, because SD works... They've got Cicchini in no woman's land, in the middle, sitting on Norsgaard. She's just been dropped by uh, Elisa Longoborghini. 
So she needs to get back ASAP to start pulling because they're not really pulling that hard behind. Eventually, she does go, go back and we see Kopecky had been pulling, who'd just been in the attack, which she didn't wasn't allowed to work in, and Vandenberg Black was sitting on, and the gap's 30 seconds. And so that's the race. Like, yes, there's a few things that happen afterwards, and Chikini comes up and paces because Majerus wasn't able to pull, even though Kopecky didn't pull before because they were running for Majerus' leader, which didn't make sense, and then Kopecky launches Vandenbroek Black on this cobble sector with 26 k's to go, gets it to 11 seconds, but here's the problem. No one's willing to work with Vandenbroek Black. She's just put everybody on the limit. Grace Brown might pull for Cavalli, but she looks like she's under pressure and she's not able to pull. You've got Lucinda Brand in the group, Mackay and Pfeiffer Georgie for DSM. Maybe Cavalli should have pulled and Mackay for DSM and Pfeiffer Georgie. You can see the gap was only 10 seconds at this point. But really the problem was that Vandenbroek Black used Kopecky to launch her and then dropped her. And so she doesn't have, neither of them have a teammate in the group to pull it back. And they also tried to attack across a gap that was 26, 27 seconds too far. As well as Longo Borghini having the best cheer squad in the world. So that was the problem compounded by Vandenbroek Black then attacking that group. And DSM didn't like that very much. Neither did FTJ who'd been actually pulling a little bit. Five of Georgie attacking. And so here the race really was done. 22 k's to go. Go. They're sitting up waiting for the Kopecky group to come back, which has, I think, one, two, three Trek Segafredo riders in it, Brand and Van Dyke. And then the next sector, after Kopecky had come back, the roles seemed to be reversed, with Vanderbilt Black giving Kopecky a lead up. Anyway, all curious to me, but it was trivial with Elisa Longo Borghini being given such a gap with 30 k's to go, and the only danger for her really was keeping it upright when she nearly yeeted herself through that sector. Gets to the last cobble sector, Carrefour de Labra, five-star sector, 25-second gap, and she was looking absolutely comfortable. She's had, an, Palmares-wise, a quiet season, Elisa Longo Borghini, but that's largely because they're signing of, uh, Elisa Bolzano, her Italian world champ colleague, where at Binder, which she won last year, she had to ride for her this year, Elisa Balsamo. And when she got her chance at this race, took it with both hands. Really smart from Elisa Longo Borghini. Taps her head, like Paolini style. Well-deserved winner. And Trek were by far the strongest and smartest team today with Kopecky winning the sprint for second ahead of Brand in the velodrome. So another exciting addition. We now have... A data sample of one wet edition of Paris Bay Femme of Exwift and now one dry edition. But on both occasions, Trek, Segafredo have won. Longo Borghini ahead of Capecchi, Brand, Shabby, Cavalli, Mackay, Van Dijk, Vanderbilt, Black, Georgie, and Alonso Dominguez rounding out the top 10. I hope you enjoyed the video. Paris Bay men's race tomorrow. Make sure you go and check out Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast for our immediate reactions after the race. I'll see you with the recap video tomorrow. Ciao.